Hi, Honors Chemistry. It's uh, April 15th, Wednesday, and I'm glad to see you again today. We're going to do a, some chemical reactions today. We're going to talk about chemical kinetics, which means how fast the reaction proceeds. And one way to make it proceed faster is to grind it up with a mortar and pestle. And you can see that flour has been ground up. When I was a little kid, my mom used to always make homemade bread. And she had some pretty coarse flour. And so I had this little mechanism that I would spin like that. that you might see down a cracker barrel. And I would crush up all that flour and make it really fine so she could make her bread. That was my job. Okay. I'm glad you really are interested in that. So we're going to go ahead and put a little flour on top of that flame. Just a little bit of flour. No, by the way, the flour is the fuel, the flame is the ignition, and the pipe is the channel. Channels all the energy. And so I'm sure you've heard of pipe bombs before. I'm not trying to make you into a bunch of little terrorists here, okay? You know, uh, don't croak without Jesus. That's my viewpoint. And I'll try not to get this thing on fire. Whoop. I'm not wearing my protective equipment, but shh. here we go. Try that again. Let's try that again. Here we go. Sprinkle a little bit more slowly this time, Mr. Schultz. Guys, still there? I'm here. Oh, yeah. Did you see that? Okay. Normally, I use lycopodium powder. And so it gets a bigger, a bigger old poof. Now, you saw the flame come out of the top of the tube. And so this right here will show you that if it's clumped up, there's not enough surface area. I was sprinkling it in there. There's a lot of surface area letting the oxygen get to all of the fuel. So what we'll do is we'll just go ahead and start this little blowtorch here. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll try to we'll try to catch that mountain of uh, flour on uh, fire. You can see that it will not catch on fire. It gets a little bit nasty looking, but it doesn't take a big old poof up the top of that uh, channel there, that tube. And so, you know what? We're going to carry you into the next room and show you a couple more demonstrations. So you just follow me. Here we go. I did that back in the basement so I wouldn't burn the house down. And we're going in here. You see this right here? You know what that is? Let me go ahead and lift it up. That is boiling water. You see all of that steam up here? That's really hot. So what they do is they perform uh, chemical reactions with steam instead of with water and steam will cause it to react more quickly because steam has all that energy. And if you have all that energy, guess what? You're gonna have more frequent collisions. You're probably gonna have uh, more energetic collisions between the molecules and, and uh, you might have more of those uh, proper orientations. computer back in in order to get the power back in there perfect 
thank you. I got my assistant helping me today. And now that might make it a little bit more interesting for you. So what we're going to do next is I'm going to take some hydrogen peroxide and I'm going to put it in here in this little test tube. And I'm going to use what's called a catalyst. Did you notice that hydrogen peroxide comes in brown bottles? Do you know why? The reason is because even the heat in the air in the room will cause this to break down. The formula for hydrogen peroxide is H2O2, and it is breaking down into water even as we speak. Whatever temperature, look, I'm putting some heat into this right now. It's breaking down into water, and what's released? Well, let's take a look here. H2O2. Becomes water. And what is the other element that is left over? There's two oxygens, one oxygen. We're going to get some oxygen. Now, you got to balance that thing out. So I won't do that right now. Because I just want to show you the demonstration. There's oxygen that is accumulating up here in this test tube. Now, can I speed that up? Yes, I can use a catalyst. Catalyst is a substance that speeds up a reaction without itself becoming part of the reaction. It is not consumed, it's not used up. It can be reused on the next reaction if you want to retrieve it. And this right here is potassium iodide. I normally use manganese dioxide. So the flower demonstration I just did was a makeshift deal since I'm at home and I don't have it at school. And I happen to have some potassium iodide here at home, which works, but I prefer using the black powder called manganese dioxide as the catalyst. But I'm gonna go ahead and ask you to watch this and see if you see anything speed up about this reaction. When I put this potassium iodide in there, you see it turns yellow a little bit. Not only does it turn yellow, but do you see all those bubbles that are forming? Do you see, if you listen real close, you hear the oxygen coming off of there? That oxygen is coming out fast now. It was coming out slow before, but by using the catalyst, we can speed up the reaction. Let me show you how fast we can speed it up. I'll just set it right there in my little test tube rack, and I'll get myself a new one. Okay, here we go. We need a match, and we'll fire this thing up. All right. There we go. What I'm going to do is let that wood burning split become a glowing ember. Now, before we do that, watch. Can my assistant turn out that light down there? Yeah. Look, you can't reach that one. Look at you. Man, this is the second year. Did I tell you that already? All right, so good problems. Okay, here we go. Ooh, isn't that neat? Let's go ahead and get a little glowing ember there again. And after we get a glowing ember, we're going to burn it, blow it out. We stick it in the oxygen that we're making. Pops right back into a flame. Here, if you get those glasses on, you can do it once. Just see what you see what you think of that. You have to be quick. Get those glasses on. They don't want to do it. Okay. So you've seen this. Now let's keep it as a flame. If you keep it as a flame and you put it up here, it will glow even brighter. Okay, so when we're um, flying the aircraft and coming in for a landing, in order to allow our eyes to work better, we breathe 100% oxygen at night when we're making night landings. And the reason is because it just makes, apparently, some chemical reaction in there that allows the eyes to work more properly, 100% oxygen. Okay, let me show you another one. This one is zinc and hydrochloric acid. Now let's take a look here. You see that right there? 
we're going to go ahead and put some water in there. You always put the water in first, not the acid. And then you put the acid on top of that. Let's put a little bit more water. And then let's put some 12 more hydrochloric acid. Just a little bit, just a little slush. Okay. Now that's not real. That's not real exacting, is it? Forgot to bring home my glass stirring rods. Let's take a little piece of uh, little piece of zinc right there. That's called mossy zinc. And we're going to put it in here, and you want you to watch the reaction. There's not a whole lot of reaction. Normally with zinc and hydrochloric acid, what happens is the zinc displaces the hydrogen. And so you get zinc chloride and the hydrogen goes and dances by itself. Okay, so let's see again. Do you see any hydrogen dancing by itself coming off of that reaction? Pretty slow. But what if you increase the concentration of the hydrochloric acid? Let's just add some more hydrochloric acid to this. Tell you what, I'm gonna re I'm just gonna replace some of the water on the solute on the solvent is diminished and so we're going to stick some more of this acid in a smaller amount of water now let's see what happens to that do you see that reaction occurring look at that gas coming off of there like gangbusters do you see it coming out pretty fast now isn't it and why is it coming out pretty fast because there was an increase in concentration of the acid And so that's probably all the demonstrations I want to do right now. Oh, yeah, we'll talk more about this section two at the beginning uh, tomorrow. So I did basically 536 to 538. And so we'll see you.